Uh, well, that's pretty shady company uh, we're keeping there. Uh, uh, yeah, I suppose so. Uh, but uh, taking the very long view and, and trying to look for that quarter full glass here. Yeah. Uh, Torturous is a very, very old human activity. This is a real atavistic thing. This goes back a really long way. And when you are measuring it on a world level, you're, you're really trying to look at humanity's process of trying to kick the habit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not that you can go back to some earlier values in your roots and go, oh, we never used to torture. <laughs> right. That, that's not really the history of the human race, unfortunately. Yeah, this so, is all progress. Yeah, yeah. You need to look at these norms as uh, works in progress, as things that are in development. And um, I think if you get, we have 60% of the world's population represented in these countries. And I think if you have 57% on average across so many countries here, including some very authoritarian ones, where there is plenty of torture going on, uh, saying that they think that this should be an unequivocal ban, then mm. I, that's uh, in a small measure, good news. Yeah, oh, I agree with that. And, you know, it seems like the argument ought to win out that, uh, you know, none of these people really are anything more than suspects. It's no different than uh, on the local news last night. They accused a guy at the local motel of molesting a couple of kids. Well, lock him up and throw away the key, except that he's a suspect. He hasn't been convicted of anything. Uh, maybe he is a child molester, maybe he's not, but that remains to be shown. And the idea that you just torture him into admitting what a child molester he is doesn't make any sense to us in this society. We know better than that. Why should it be any different than... The guy's supposedly a member of Al-Qaeda. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you some other poll findings from earlier studies we did just with Americans on this subject. Okay. Um, we found that it's very important for people in a poll to at least get informed, is there a structure of law about this already or not, um, so that they are not really being asked to, to spin out their ideas in a vacuum without any uh, information about what the law actually is. So, for instance, when Americans were told in 2006 that the U.S. has signed a number of international treaties that prohibit torture and then asked, do you approve of the U.S. signing these treaties or not, 82% approved. Only 15% disapproved of hmm. this. We've also asked about court proceedings in a case where there's an accusation of torture, and we've asked, who should be held responsible at law? The one who did the torturing, the one who gave the orders, or both? And 77% of Americans said they should both be responsible before the law. Only 4% said it should be limited to the one who did it, and only 12% said it should be limited to the one who gave orders. Mm. And I'll give you one more like this. Back in 2004, just a little after the discovery of Abu Ghraib, we went to work and did a poll. One of the questions we asked was, do you think that a soldier should have the right to disobey an order that he receives from a superior, but he thinks violates international law? And 77% of Americans said, in that case, the soldier should have the right to disobey the order. That surprised us very much to see such a high level of, of support for uh, someone in uniform going out on a limb, a long limb, and being insubordinate for this reason. Yeah, yeah, that definitely is uh, something to be hopeful about, it sounds like. Uh, people, I guess, remember the these kinds of lessons that they learn when they're little kids. I mean, that to me, that's really what I'm getting to is all this stuff just contradicts the way that, I, you know, I was brought up. And I think most of my, uh, you know, peers and neighbors and fellow Americans and so forth have been brought up. Well, you know, the, the whole legend of America is the good guy at the end of World War II and the Germans said I was just following orders and that wasn't good enough. We mm -hmm. all know that. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, those positive-sounding results that I cited... They're, they're all based on having the information somewhere in the question that there are these laws. Right. And what we've seen in the last six years is the, uh, the policy elite quarreling very publicly over whether these laws exist or not. And I think that that failure by the policy elite is really the biggest reason why you see the 
the number of people who say they would support an exception to the ban on torture creeping up from 2006 to 2008 in this country. Yeah. Now, I'm sorry, I'm paging through your uh, your homepage there at worldpublicopinion.org, and I'm looking for something along these lines. I'm not quite finding it, but I figure I'll go ahead and ask you while I got you on the phone. Have you done a survey of uh, Americans' views toward the idea of a war with Iran? We have asked a number of different questions about that. Well, first of all, if you put it to them, the idea of talks with Iran without conditions, We've done that several times since 2003, and we've always found 70% or more who support that idea. A majority has said that also that they do not think there would be any effectiveness to attempting to use a military strike to knock out Iran's uh, nuclear program. Mm -hmm. Overall, a majority of Americans are quite strongly opposed to attempting to solve our problems with Iran through military action, and there is very substantial support in the order of 70% or more for holding direct talks with Iran. Wow, 70%. And now, um, do you know offhand uh, where I can click on your website and get that? That's my new footnote. Uh, well, if you uh, just use the search mm -hmm. and look up, I would suggest... Um, Iran talks? Yeah, uh, yeah. just Iran. Yeah. Um, there are two occasions where we did polls of Iranians and Americans in which we asked people in both countries a lot of the same questions. Huh. And that's what I was speaking from primarily. Yeah. And so tell me about the Iranians and what they think of all this. Well, the Iranians as a, uh, as a whole uh, tend to be committed to the nuclear program as it has been explained to them by their government. Mm -hmm. So they believe that they're conducting a program to uh, have nuclear power plants, to have nuclear energy as an alternative to using oil, and that that is all that's going on. They may be right or they may be wrong, but to the degree that they understand that to be true, uh, that this is not a process of getting toward a nuclear weapon, they consequently support this aspect of the government. Uh, they don't uniformly support Iranian government policies at all, especially the way the domestic economy is handled, which uh, has given rise to a lot of dissatisfaction in Iran. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people talk about uh, the people of Iran hate the mullahs so much. If we only bomb them, they'll all rise up and take our side against them. Uh, there is really no evidence for that, and we have tested that a lot. Really? Uh, yes, yes. People do not, you know, by any means describe uh, their system as, you know, as perfect. But they view its limitations as not coming from the constitution of Iran. Okay? So you have a situation where people experience that they vote a lot. <laughs> they they vote for parliament. They vote directly for the president. Um, they vote for other councils and bodies. They vote for the the assembly that is supposed to be the one that picks the the Ayatollah, uh, that picks Khamenei, the, uh, the religious leader of the state. They don't necessarily feel that the Iranian government is fully representative of what the people want, but you, you wouldn't have popular support for throwing out the whole, you know, shooting match. Right, and, and particularly not with a shooting match. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, well, listen, uh, I really appreciate this and uh, have bookmarked your website, and I'll be uh, checking back uh, for more of your work here. It looks like really interesting stuff, just my search results from Iran at worldpublicopinion.org brought up all kinds of interesting stuff to be examined here. So uh, I'm going to have a good time doing that. I really appreciate your time today on the show. Thanks. It was my pleasure. All right, folks, that's Clay Ramsey, Research Director at worldpublicopinion.org. And let me see if I can find the title of this thing on antiwar.com today. It's... Uh in the war on terror section today at antiwar.com poll, more than 10% of Americans think torture is fine in general.